dear students this is a question of uh, financial reporting specimen exam constructive response question in the topic is uh, preparation of financial statement that is final account now let's first of all just see the requirement of the question so the first requirement says that uh, prepare a schedule of adjustment required to retain earning of Candy Co. as at 30th September 20x5 as a result of information in notes number 1, 2, 3. So we have to uh, calculate or uh, adjust retain earning 8 marks. The next requirement says that prepare the statement of financial position that is balance sheet as at 30th September 2005. The notes are not required 9 marks. And the third requirement says that prepare the extract from the statement of cash flows but for operating activity and only investing activity which relates only to the property plant and equipment so we have to prepare a partial uh, operating activity and investing activity so this is worth 20 marks question and we have been provided with the excel sheet so we have to solve the complete question here now let's just identify the information important requirements this scenario relates to three requirements after preparing a draft statement of profit and loss account for the year ended 30th September 2005 and adding the current year's draft profit before any adjustment in note number one to three to retain earning the summarized trial balance as at 30th September is. So it means that this retain earning is adjusted for this year but missing the adjustment of one, two and three. And then we have to adjust the balance sheet also uh, prepare a balance sheet with the help of this. So you can see that uh, the first item in the trial balance is equity shares credit 20,000 retain earning without adjustment 15,500 the proceed of loan note. And there is a note number one credit at 30,000. Let's see what is in note number one. The note number one says that the loan note was issued on 1st October 2004. That is at the start of the year. This is the start of the year and incurred issue cost of 1 million. So let me just put the values here in the scratch pad in order to remember few key information. So first of all, it's a loan note. Issue date is uh, 1st October and uh, we have uh, a issue that has been issued at issue cost issue cost is 1 million and that is charged in profit and loss now this is a wrong treatment issue cost is to be deducted from the uh, amount of the loan note that is the proceed of the loan note so let me just identify the proceed of the loan note so the loan note proceed is given as 30,000. So immediately what I have to do is to just put some working here. Proceed is 30,000 and uh, deduct the initial cost of uh, 1,000. So in this way, the adjusted value is 29,000. Now, after this, we can see that the interest of 1.8 million that is 6% was paid and this interest is part of profit and loss account. Let's see interest paid is in profit and is in trial balance. That means it has been adjusted 1800, but we know that the interest that is to be charged under IFRS nine interest is charged using the effect rate and that effective rate in the question is not 6% it's 9% that means finance cost that is to be charged is 30,000 minus 1 that is 29,000 multiply by 9% rather than this this is the amount that we have to adjust the loan is redeemable on 30th September 2009 
at a substantial premium, which gives an effective interest rate of 9%. No other repayment are due until 30th September 2009. So we have to adjust this mistake and then let's see where we have to put the effect. So first of all, one effect is in profit and loss account. Other effect is in, you can see that uh, the value that is uh, 29,000 into 9% and that is uh, considered to be 2610. So if finance cost is 2610, then uh, amount charge in profit and loss account is 1800. So the leftover amount is 810 is to be charged in profit and loss account. Similarly, the loan note value will be 29,000 plus uh, 810. That is the difference between the effective rate and the interest paid. So that becomes 29810. So this is the complete uh, solution. I'm just have working in here and I'll copy that working in the Excel sheet. So this is the working. So now as I have to do prepare a statement of retain earning. So what I can do is prepare a pro forma of retain earning and then I will put some information. So here is first retain earnings. So you can see that here you can see this is retain earning. So as per trial balance, the retain earning given is, what is the retain earning? So retain earning is 15,500, take 15,500. Now we have to make adjustment in that. So adjustments are related with issue cost, finance cost and other adjustments. So I'll, I'll put some space here and then I'll work for the consolidated statement of financial position. So let's just discuss the other one and then I will start putting figures in that. So the second one is non current assets. Let's see in trial balance. There is an investment property which is held at fair value, which is note number two, 20,000. One of the non current asset. Other is the land 5 million building at cost note number two, 35,000. So land, if land is 5 million, then building is 30 million. So let's put some values here. Here is uh, land and building. So the land and building cost is 5,000 plus 30,000. So the land and building total cost is 35,000. Okay. Now we have a plan and equipment. It cost 58,500 plant 58,500 just accumulated depreciation of building 20,000. So building Accumulated depreciation is given as uh, 20,000 here and uh, plant depreciation accumulated has been given as uh, 34,500. This is necessary information. Now there is a suspense account as well, credit balance. So we have to adjust that suspense account as well. Now you can see note number two. On 1st October 2004, at the beginning of the year, Candy Co owned two investment properties. The first property had a carrying amount of 15 million. So in that investment property, that is 20,000. So one of the investment property is worth 15,000. Let me put investment property here. So it's investment property and that is uh, 20,000 given. One of the investment property is worth 15 million. 
carrying amount was uh, 15,000 and selling price is 17,000. So there is a gain on disposal of 2000. We have to adjust this gain. So this is the gain. Now another property. Now the leftover property is of uh, first property is 15 million. So that means 5 million. The disposal proceed have been credited to a suspense account in the trial balance. So this is the credit value disposal proceed is being credited with suspense account. So we have to adjust this suspense account. And uh, what we have to do is to debit suspense account and to credit the sale proceeds. The entry has been made as cash debit suspense account credit. So we have to debit suspense account and the necessary adjustment has to be made. So let's move to the second property. Second property on 31st December 2004. That is very important. On 31st December 20x4. That property becomes an honor occupied. An honor occupied treatment is an IS 16. That becomes an honor occupied property. And its remaining useful life was 20 years. Life at that date, 20 years. So it is to be depreciated. So if you can see that uh, the depreciation that we have to calculate on this property, uh, depreciation on uh, property for the remaining period, we have to work out on the investment property figure. But first of all, we have to identify the cost and we have to see that what. So the second property become owner occupied property and so was transferred to land and building at its fair value of 6 million. So the fair value was at the time it was 6 million. Okay. And the remaining life was 20 years. Now it says that uh, the pro price of property has increased significantly in recent years. And so the director decided to revalue the land and building. But first of all, okay, the second, the land and building given above, which is the 30,000 building. The directors accept the report of an independent surveyor who on 1st October valued the land at 8 million at the beginning and the building at 39 million and the revaluation is specify exclude the transferred investment property. The remaining life was 15 years and K does not make an annual transfer to retain earning re reflecting the realization of the surplus. However, the revaluation will give rise to a deferred tax liability and the income tax is 20%. Plant and equipment is depreciated at the rate of 12.5 using the reducing balance method. No depreciation has yet been charged on any non-current asset. So first of all, let's have some working regarding the, let's some, put some working here regarding the property plan and equipment. Non current assets. This is the working. So, this is the element of uh, building. First of all, let me just identify the cost of the land. What is the value of the land? So if you can see that uh, the carrying amount that is given above is thirty five thousand and there is a depreciation as well. So the cumulative uh, land and building carrying amount is so you can see that uh, 
the total value is uh, 35 so 35000 is the value 35000 is the value minus the accumulated depreciation and that is given as 20000 so the value of land and building you can see it's given in the trial balance the land and building which i have copied here the land and building is uh, 35000 and the building depreciation is 20000 so the book value of land and building is 15000 now the revaluation took place at what date at the beginning of date or at the end of the date we have to see at what date the revaluation took place so revaluation took place on 1st october 2004 at the beginning of the year where land is 8 million and building is 39 million so the uh, revalued amount you have to compare the revalued amount revalued amount and the revalued amount is given as is equal to take from the figure 8 million uh, plus the 39,000 and this is the revalued amount so the carrying amount of land and building after depreciation was 15,000 and revalued amount was 47,000 so that means again on revaluation is the difference between this minus this this is the gain so this is the gain on revaluation now this gain on revaluation will be part of balance sheet this also creates a defer tax liability so we'll discuss this defer defer tax again now after this we have to calculate depreciation on building and depreciation on investment property which becomes an owner occupied property so let's calculate depreciation so we have uh, land and building depreciation depreciation of land and building obviously land is not yet is not being depreciated so obviously it's uh, building to be depreciated so the value of building is now from this so let me just put it here only write the building one what is the building value after revaluation the building becomes uh, 39000 the building becomes 39000 so is equal to 39000 and the life was at the time of revaluation 15 years you can see here the life is 15 years so the per annum depreciation is 2600 what about the investment property the investment property which is now become the owner occupied property so we have to calculate the overall investment property result as well so that investment property which becomes an owner occupied property and at that time its value was 6000 and the remaining life was uh, put a bracket here remaining life was at the time of that considered to be this one 20 years on 31st december so we are preparing accounts to september so jan till september it's nine months so what we have to do we have to put a figure here this is the bracket this is six thousand divided by 20 this is per annum depreciation and this is multiplied by uh, 9 divided by 12 so you can see there is 225 you can see the task there is equal to cost or fair value divided by life into the time apportionment so the total depreciation comes out to be uh, on land and building total depreciation on land and building is total depreciation on land and building is is equal to this plus this so we have 2825 this is land and building we can also uh, identify here the carrying amount to be shown in balance sheet or we can separately do it 
now here is uh, plant so the cost of the plant and machinery and then the depreciation so for plant i have identified the carrying amount the carrying amount and the carrying amount is what is carrying amount it is the cost here this one it is the cost 58500 and this is the cost 58500 minus uh, the value 34500 is the depreciation you can again cross check yes it's depreciation 24000 so 24000 is the carrying amount now as it's a reducing balance method so the depreciation is at the reducing balance rate so i'll select this the rate of depreciation is 12.5 percent so it's 0 0.125 so this is the depreciation 3000 so on plant the depreciation is 3000 so if i put uh, this value so if i put a minus sign here that value becomes 3000 and the adjusted carrying amount is now to be shown in balance sheet is uh, Okay, let me just put the sum function here. We can do it without minus sign as well. So this is the carrying amount to be shown in balance sheet. So we have done with land and building revaluation, buildings depreciation, planted equipment depreciation and the technical element. Now, as far as investment property is concerned on the first investment property, there is a gain of 2000 and the second investment property has been transferred. So now let's move to the other, move to the other part. This uh, revaluation is subject to 20% rate. Okay. But first of all, let's see. A provision of 2.4 million is required for income tax in the profit and loss for the year. So it is the ending balance of income tax provision 2.4 million. Let's see in the trial balance. What is the income tax? There is a income tax of uh, 1100. So this 1100 is on credit side. And if the value is on credit side, what it says, it says the over provision. So let me have some working of the tax. Let's put the working here. Taxation. So it's taxation. And taxation working says that we have to make a provision at the end of uh, how much provision is needed. We have to make a provision of 2400. And uh, we have already have over provision. What is the rule? Over provision, under provision, we have to adjust and over provision is to be over provision is to be deducted so put a minus sign here over provision 1100 as a result the adjusted figure is okay this is an adjusted figure So adjusted figure of current tax is is equal to sum select this. So this is the income tax expense for the year against the current tax but we have to adjust deferred tax expense or income whatever is the here and after that we will calculate the amount so here we can refer to deferred tax is there any deferred tax so in the trial balance you can see that there is a deferred tax credit balance 2500 and note number two and three so we have 
defer text working here. So it's a defer text working. So let's put defer text balances here. So the ending balance, we have to connect the ending balance of defer text and then compare with the opening balance of defer text. So as a result, increase or decrease in defer text, we can identify. So it says that uh, in addition to temporary differences related to the information it note number two, which is revaluation, Candico has further taxable temporary differences of 10 million as at 30th September 2005. So as at 30th September 2005, we have temporary differences, which is one is uh, 10 million and other is the temporary differences against revaluation surplus and the revaluation surplus amount you can take from the property plan and equipment note. So this is the total temporary difference, taxable temporary difference. If this is a taxable temporary difference, it will result in defer tax liability. If you multiply by the tax rate, which is 20%, so it's a deferred tax liability at the end of the year. Now at the beginning of the year, uh, that is uh, 1st October, we have already the deferred tax liability and that deferred tax liability was 2,500. So it means uh, increase in deferred tax liability, increase in liability and uh, that is, um, amount select this minus select this this is the increase in defer tax liability of 5900 now increase is always result in an expense defer tax expense debit defer tax liability credit but uh, we know that uh, the amount that results from the revaluation is to be charged in where OCI. So we have to uh, adjust the amount 5900. So we have to adjust the amount. So let's see how much is that 32,000 is, is the revaluation multiply by 0 0.20. So that means 6400 is to be credited uh, is to be debited against revaluation surplus. So the charge in the PNL is not charged rather than a credit is to be made in PNL and which is equal to this minus this and this is minus 500. So a defer tax uh, credit amount is to be shown here. So a defer tax credit amount is to be shown here and that is 500. So you can just link it here is equal to If you have to show minus then ignore this. So this is the minus amount already put it here. So the charge to defer tax was 1300 positive, but uh, after deducting 500, now the net charge in PNL is, uh, is equal to this one. Okay. So this is some, So this is 800 to be charged in profit and loss account as an adjustment. And finally, then we can identify the information that is to be put in balance sheet. So this is what the taxation, deferred tax, building, land, depreciation and loan note that I have just put it here, loan note. So I have to just put a working of loan note here as well, because whatever you have uh, written in the scratch pad, is not being marked by the examiner. So let's put a loan note here. So the amount raised is 30,000. And then we have 
issue cost which is charged to profit and loss account and that was issue cost so net proceed that we have to receive is this sum total multiply by this so this is 29000 and uh, the finance cost is uh, is equal to this one multiply by the rate and the effective rate was 9% so that was 0 0.09 and 6 was that interest uh, so the loan afterwards becomes the this one you can do it as well so interest charged is 1800 so the charge in profit and loss account a charge in profit and loss account is the difference between this so this minus this this is a charge and as a result the loan amount becomes this one and we have uh, the loan amount what is the loan amount exactly the loan amount becomes 29,000 plus 810. So this is the value plus click on this. This is 29810 that we have to charge in profit and loss account. Close this scratch pad. So the first requirement is a schedule of adjustment needed to retain earning. All the working is there so I'm just going to put it here retain earning adjustment now if you feel trouble after considering the question what you can do you can make it a bit visible so as per trial balance we have uh, retain earning available one five five double zero now we need to make some adjustment so if uh, Issue cost is being charged in profit and loss account. That means it is considered as an expense. So retain earning has been decreased. Now increase retain earning by the adjustment. Similarly, we have to add finance cost and the finance cost, total finance cost is not being is to be charged in profit and loss account. So the total finance cost is 9% and that is uh, 2610. It's an expense. So it will reduce retain earning 2610. So minus figure. Now, similarly, there is a gain on investment property. Investment property. And uh, that gain you can show it here as 15,000 was the value and uh, the difference between 17,000 minus 15,000 this is the gain 2,000 increase the retained earning and uh, the remaining transfer of property the leftover amount was uh, 5,000 and the value was transferred to 6,000. That means it's a revaluation. So is equal to 6,000 minus 5,000, which is the carrying amount. So it is again gain on transfer of property. Now we have to consider depreciation of uh, building. So the building depreciation is uh, considered to be here we have calculated building depreciation including total depreciation which is B22. So we have made B22 is uh, it's equal to B22. Click on that B22. So as a result the value here is 
the appreciation of building but uh, we have to put a minus here because we have to show depreciation as an expense so depreciation is minus depreciation of plant depreciation of plant in b23 there is a depreciation of plant and uh, what you can do put is equal to minus here and depreciation of plant link it the value depreciation of plant it's already minus so i have to just deduct it the value is already in minus depreciation of plant now one more thing that is tax charge for the year if it is an expense then figure would be in minus so is equal to minus and then connect with the working of the uh, taxation that is a charge so the charge is 800 so put 800 here and you can see now we have uh, retained earning as per trial balance then issue cost finance cost gain transfer of property gain depreciation of building plant and then we have a tax charge so let's calculate the retained earning figure now so this is uh, the adjusted retained earning and uh, if you just uh, go through it is equal to sum break it open and select the cell first one and then drag it down up to the last one c is equal to and this is one zero two six five so this is our final answer so this is our first calculation for eight marks now lots of calculation is already been done so i'll just prepare the consolidated balance sheet i can prepare it here consolidated sfp for 30th september it's 30th september this is consolidated sfp now in consolidated sfp the first one is property plan and equipment and it's property plant and equipment so i have to identify the value of property plan and equipment so first of all the land and building land and building and what was the value of land and building we have just identified the land and building that is uh, one was the uh, land and building original and other was the transferred property so I have to check the figures in land and building. So revalued amount was 47,000. And from that 47,000, we have to deduct depreciation of uh, 2825. And then 21,000 is the figure so what we have to do is to put some working here in case of land and building let me just some put some values is equal to finally after revaluation the balance was we can use it direct from here that after revaluation the value was 8 million plus 39 million that is 47,000 so it's 47,000 there was a transfer of property and the transfer of property was uh, 6,000 and then we have a amount of depreciation and that depreciation we have calculated the amount of depreciation charge on property that is you can relate also this amount 28 
2825. So it's 2825. It's 2825 minus 2825. So this is the value carrying amount. Now here we have plant. So I can just put the carrying amount because I have just calculated it before. So the plant carrying amount is uh, this is the amount connected here. So the total value of uh, non-current asset, total non-current asset is is equal to this one. Put a sum here. This and this is seven double one seven five. Now we have to put current asset in the whole question. There was no adjustment in current asset, so took from the question. What was the current asset? Current asset was uh, this is sixty eight thousand seven hundred. We just put the value sixty eight thousand seven hundred. So in this way we have total assets and the total assets are this one plus this. This is the total assets. This is the total assets. Now afterwards we have to show equity. There was no adjustment. So equity is the same. 20,000. There was a revaluation surplus and that revaluation surplus net of defer tax was 32,000 was the value and its defer tax implication was 20 percent. So that was 6,400 and uh, retain earning. So you can just link it here on the above working retain earning. So that is the retain earning. In the first working retain earning was there. So this is the adjusted retain earning here. So it's equity plus revaluation surplus plus retain earning. So it's total equity is equal to sum the total here so this is the value five five eight six five this is the equity value now we have to put some uh, non-current liabilities so there is a non-current liability and here we can see that uh, there is only one non-current liability and that was uh, sorry there is two non-current liabilities one is the loan note which is uh, what which is what that was uh, by our default working the loan note working was there so that was a loan note working Let's just directly put that 29810 and we have uh, deferred tax provision ending and that provision ending was required as uh, again the value i can use my working deferred tax so this is my deferred tax working. This is my deferred tax working. So this is 8,400. Now after that, uh, I'll put some current liability. Current liability. So you can see that current liability and the current liability is uh, available in the trial balance uh, as in the trial balance current liability is given as uh, 43400 and then we have uh, income tax provision at the end we can directly put this as was given in the question so this is 2400 so as a result we have uh, now equity of uh, 55865 we have loan note and we have uh, current liability 
so now this is the total so i'll just put the figures here one is the total equity one is the total equity now a plus and then this loan note again a plus and then defer tax plus we can also use this sum figure and this okay it went wrong so 2400 was the value so let me just do it again so that was the value b71 and if i put a plus sign again b72 and that is 139875 and this is equity and liability total so let's see what was our assets total 139875 and this is 139875 so this is the balance sheet for nine marks. Now the third requirement says that prepare statement of cash flows and under statement of cash flows, we have to show the relevant amount. So it's the statement of cash flows and uh, under operating activity, we have to show the property plan and equipment balance only what is to be adjusted. So first of all, there is an adjustment of depreciation. Depreciation is to be added back. There is a adjustment gain on investment property. And there is a, a gain on uh, disposal as well. So, and uh, gain on revaluation of investment property investment property so the depreciation figure was uh, the total depreciation figure and uh, we have to use this depreciation figure from the we have to add back so just take the figure of the first one depreciation so it's uh, Depreciation is 2825 plus 3000. So depreciation is 2825 plus 3000. So it's 2825 plus 3000. 2825 plus 3000. You can also link it up. So it's uh, Two eight two five plus three thousand. So two eight two five plus three thousand. This is depreciation. Now gain on investment was uh, gain on disposal of investment. Gain on disposal and it was two thousand. So the rule says that deduct it. And afterwards, 1000 was the gain on revaluation before transfer. So these three are the adjustment in the operating activity. And then the investing activity related to property plan and equipment in the above question. And there is only one activity in the note number two. And that is related with the uh, sale proceed of property and that was 17,000 plus. Now we have to just produce the relevant activities here. We don't need to prepare the whole investing activity and operating activity. So there, there are few transactions in it and the worth this worth three marks. So this is the total of 20 marks question and, uh, Likewise, there are uh, very much chances that uh, a 20 marks question uh, comprising of uh, the income statement and balance sheet statement of change in equity might come in the exam.